everybody welcome back to another episode of shifty's 49ers talk in this video we are going to preview the week two matchup between the 0-1 San Francisco 49ers and the 1-0 Seattle Seahawks. But first, before we get into that, I do want to thank everyone again for checking out my latest video about the Marlon Mack signing. Also, again, a big thank you for coming to the stream last Sunday. I will, of course, be streaming the game against the Seattle Seahawks this coming Sunday. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Can't wait for it. But let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into the preview. The first part of this preview is going to be looking at the previous matchup between the 49ers and the Seahawks. Of course, they are a big time divisional rival and we play them twice a year. The last time we faced them was week 13 of the 2021 season at Seattle. They ended up winning the game 30 to 23. It's a game that went down to the wire. The Niners got a crazy fumble recovery. They had a final drive and just came up short. So a couple of things of note in that game. Of course, for the Seattle Seahawks, they still had quarterback Russell Wilson. For the Niners, of course, we were still starting Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. But some other notable things in that game, Kittle, nine catches, 181 yards, two touchdowns. I think we all remember his crazy touchdown running along the sidelines. That was awesome. There was actually no Debo Samuel in that game. Some other things of note though, which were pretty wild, is that the Seahawks, that, that crazy fake punt, like 75 yard run, which led to a big touchdown. And of course, Garoppolo, we all know he's good for at least one a game, but he actually had two pretty bad interceptions in that game, and ultimately the Seahawks won that game. Now we're going to move on to how the both teams, the Niners and the Seahawks, played last week. Looking at the games last week, of course, the 49ers, we lost to the Chicago Bears, a game that the Niners looked pretty good in the first half, and then things just got out of our way, mostly due to the Debo Samuel fumble penalties and just the really really bad weather in the middle to late fourth quarter where it just made it impossible to mount any realistic comeback but the Seattle Seahawks they came away with a very impressive and pretty surprising win against the Denver Broncos who are now of course led by Russell Wilson there was a crazy last minute of that game and controversially the Denver Broncos elected to kick a 64 yard field goal as opposed to fourth and five with a minute left with their new 250 million plus dollar quarterback but they elected to go for a crazy one of the longest field goal kicks in history don't understand it but hey Ultimately, for the Seahawks, of course, it worked out for them, and they are now solely at the top of the NFC West. Who would have predicted that? That's pretty wild. But next in this preview, let's now get into some of the key matchups in this Week 2 game between the 49ers and Seahawks. The first matchups that I want to talk about, and these are star players, is going to be the Seattle Seahawks duo at wide receiver, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, going up against the starters for the 49ers at cornerback, Emmanuel Mosley, and of course, Charvarius Ward. Now, Ward had a really up and down game against the Bears, although I think for the vast majority of the plays, he played pretty well. He did have a really, really bad holding penalty, which extended a Chicago drive that ultimately led to a touchdown. I think, you know, just from a fan's perspective, this is going to be a marquee matchup between these receivers and cornerbacks with the Niners cornerbacks these guys are big they're physical maybe something that DK Metcalf isn't totally used to going up against but we have to be aware because we know Tyler Lockett has electric speed so we have to be able to be ready for that look we play this team twice a year if we're not ready for it now I guess we probably never will be but I'll be really curious to see you know how this matchup plays out honestly looking at the two games of last year you know, while D'Amico Ryans has been our defensive coordinator. Metcalf and Lockett, although they've both had solid games in the two matchups last year, they didn't have any crazy big time games. Like they maybe had like 60 yards and a touchdown. There was no like 150 yard game or anything like that. So I do think the 49ers will come up with a really solid game plan to help slow them down. And this year we actually have some really talented cornerbacks. So but just as a fan's perspective, I can't wait to see, you know, the Seahawks receivers and the Niners cornerbacks just go at it all day long. 
Now moving on from there, I think we have a really, really big notable matchup here, again involving some star players. The 49ers, Nick Bosa, he had a really, really good game against the Bears. You know, Justin Fields just made a ton of amazing plays with his legs to escape pressure. But now Nick Bosa goes up against the rookie, Charles Cross. Top 10 pick of Seattle, their franchise left tackle. Let's see how he handles a player of the caliber of Nick Bosa. We did see on the Monday night football game against the Broncos, Charles Cross of the Seattle Seahawks did struggle a little bit. Bradley Chubb, he was able to make some plays. Can Nick Bosa maybe make some game altering plays, whether it's tackles for loss, sacks that lead to fumbles, pressures that lead to interceptions, that remains to be seen. The next matchup is a potential matchup. So if we look at the 49ers, George Kittle, it's still a little bit up in the air whether he's going to play or not, but how he does against Seahawks with linebacker Jordan Brooks. Now, the Seahawks took Brooks in the first round a couple of years ago, obviously with the intention of him being the heir apparent to Bobby Wagner, who's now with the LA Rams. I'll be really curious to see if Kittle can play, just how these guys match up with one another. Brooks is pretty darn athletic, but we all know what George Kittle can do. So Kittle's got the size, the ability to catch the ball, break tackles, the athleticism himself. So that'll be a really exciting matchup to see how those guys do against one another. Again, assuming that George Kittle plays. Now also on the 49ers offense, I think this will be a key matchup. And it's the last matchup we're gonna look at here is gonna be Mike McGlinchey, right tackle against Uchenna Nwoso for the Seattle Seahawks. Nwoso was actually voted as the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He had a really solid game against the Broncos. A number of tackles, he had a sack. I think he recovered a fumble, maybe forced a fumble. But overall, he was everywhere for that Seahawks defense. And you know they're probably not gonna line him up against Trent Williams unless they absolutely have to. So they'll try and target the weaker, the less athletic Mike McGlinchey. So if McGlinchey can hold up in pass protection and maybe shut him down to a certain degree, I really do like the 49ers' chances here, especially to establish that passing game. But this is one to watch. We saw Mike McGlinchey get beat a couple of times. Mike McGlinchey had a couple, you know, he had that one controversial play where he got beat really badly by that uh, Chicago Bears edge rusher. Trey Lance gets sacked, and McGlinchey just runs off the field. So we'll see. You know, I'm sure in the locker room, the coaches, everyone is being like, hey, you need to make up for that. And hopefully he can do in this Week 2 matchup against the Seahawks, against a guy who was quite highly rated coming out of college, but now is really coming into his own with the Seattle Seahawks in Uchenna Nuoso. So what are some of the keys for winning this game for the San Francisco 49ers? Well, I think they need to do basically everything that they didn't do in the week one matchup, but also looking at what happened with the Denver Broncos against the Seahawks in week one. And that is we have to, have to win the turnover battle, also the penalty battle. We have to win that. The Denver Broncos were one of the only teams that actually had more penalty yards accepted against them than the 49ers. I think actually the 49ers were tied for the second most penalty yards accepted in week one. That is no kind of recipe to winning consistently in the NFL. I don't care what team you're going up against. We have to be a lot better and we have to beat the Seahawks in that regard, not only in those penalties. And here's the thing, and this has been talked about a lot in different channels, and it's one of those things where the Niners actually had the Bears stopped on two of the three Bears touchdown drives, but if it wasn't for a third down penalty. And another drive, the last drive, actually got extended also by a penalty, but it was second down. But still, the Niners just gave the Bears way too many opportunities. They cannot do that against the Seattle Seahawks. You know, ultimately, I know and I believe the 49ers have a better roster on paper. Here's how you lose those games is by turnovers, silly, unforced turnovers. But not only that, it's going to be penalties. And the Niners cannot afford to lose that battle. Now, the next thing is actually going to come down to the red zone. We saw in week one, Debo Samuel had that big time fumble in the first quarter. That's one of those things that will look. The Niners did ultimately respond immediately quite well. But you look at the grand scheme of the game, if the Niners were even able to put up three points on that drive, 
they were kind of heading towards a touchdown. They were moving the ball very efficiently that first drive. And then you fumble. It just takes all the wind out of your sails. You know, it really just pumps the brakes on the gas. So the Niners can't afford to miss any opportunities. Not only just because this is an NFL game, but think about it. Kyle Shanahan has not had much success against Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll, as Seahawks head coach, has had a ton of success against the 49ers, not only against Kyle Shanahan, but also Jim Harbaugh too. So the Niners cannot beat ourselves. When we get into the red zone, we have to make the most of those opportunities. And also the defense has to step up as well. We did see multiple blown coverages against the Chicago Bears. The defense needs to be disciplined. We can't give up those silly touchdowns where someone blows a coverage. I'd like to think that the defense in that regard will be a little bit better now that these guys, Talanoa Hufanga, who was fantastic, by the way, week one, with Tashawn Gibson back there. They have a little, they've had a full game and another full week of practice together, so hopefully their chemistry and their communication will be a lot better than what we saw week one. The next thing in terms of a key to winning the game, let's get Trey Lance into a rhythm early, often. I really do hope Kittle's playing just because he's just such a great player after the catch too. But quick passes, get Trey Lance into a rhythm because if we look at Trey Lance, he, I think, actually had a really, really solid week one performance. The last, you know, half quarter or even full quarter, the weather in Chicago got so bad, it's kind of like almost unfair to judge that last quarter performance. But hopefully we can get him into a rhythm, get that confidence built back up, and really just make some plays. And we have to capitalize on our opportunities against the Seahawks. The other thing, too, which I think is also going to tie in to getting Trey Lance into a rhythm is we have to get Brandon Ayuk involved in the offense. We know Debo should get a couple of catches at least every game. And, of course, he's going to run the ball, too. But Brandon Ayuk, I think, really is the X factor in this offense. Such a fantastic route runner, can also make plays after the catch, and just really, really good. And he has that chemistry built with Trey Lance. So I'd like to see Brandon Ayuk a minimum targeted five times. Absolute bare minimum five times. I want to see Brandon Ayuk targeted. And last but not least, I think defensively, we just have to make Geno Smith beat us. We have to be really good against the run. I think we were for the most part against Chicago. Eventually, as the game wore on, Chicago did get some yards on the ground. But if we can shut down their offense running the ball, put Geno Smith in bad situations. And look, if Geno Smith beats us, then all I can say is, wow. I mean, good luck and congratulations to the Seahawks. But ultimately, I don't really believe in Geno Smith. I don't think he's the worst quarterback by any means. And he did have a very, very solid week one performance against the Denver Broncos. But I think, you know, with the Niners defense, we should be able to get after him, force him into some mistakes, and really capitalize on we can force some turnovers. I'm really, really looking for Fred Warner to make a big play. Also, Dre Greenlaw. He was god-awful against the Bears. Penalties just not it. Dre Greenlaw multiple times just making the worst play imaginable. So if he can come back, make some big plays, whether it's a sack or a turnover, whatever, that would be awesome to see. But overall, if we Geno Smith, he's the guy who has to beat the 49ers, not the running game, not turnovers, not penalties. Alrighty, guys. So one of the things, too, is just before we're going to end up this video is, of course, I am going to give my prediction for this game. I was definitely wrong week one. I had the Niners winning 27 to 20, and of course that didn't happen. In the game against the Seahawks, I do have the 49ers winning. It's our home opener. I think it will be a close game. It's a divisional game. Seahawks have a lot of confidence. We'll see how confident the 49ers team is coming out. But I have us winning 24 to 21. It's going to be a close fight. It's going to be a close battle game all game long. And it's one of those things where it could be a nail-biter right to the very end. You know, there is some rain forecast for Santa Clara, and I really hope that isn't the case. I mean, although you could very much argue that the Niners would have a bit more of an advantage simply because we've just played in a rain game, whereas who knows the last time that Seattle played in one, so we have be more accustomed to it. But ultimately, I hope it's a clear day, you know, just straight up NFL game. And I do believe the 49ers have the talent, the coaching and the ability to come away with the win and then move to a one and one record on the season. So 
Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about this upcoming game. If you want to make any other comments about the Bears game or any other videos or content that you would like to see on this channel, you know I'm totally all, I'm all ears open to suggestions and any recommendations. But just before I say goodbye, I want to say a thank you again to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Stop by the videos comments it really does help out a lot and it means a lot to me the fact that you guys come and check out what i put out but you know i'm gonna say two things the butt counts and i'm gonna catch y'all on the flip side